try to take vacation on the road, get out and see the country. You really don't see families doing that no more. Then you don't. Get rid of everything that's underneath and just start over. And then the fun part, the steering. Hating myself already for coming up with another one of these ideas. 1966 Cobra replica. Missed the roll bar. <laughs> for looks and for safety. So it's going to be a little more complicated than I thought. We got to create the structure underneath to hold all this together. This will make it or break it. Whoa. Yeah! <laughs> I'm Bill Carlton. I built my first truck when I was 16. And ever since, me and my guys have been out here creating with our hands. Building the biggest, lowest, baddest custom trucks and cars in the game. People don't come here for what they need. They come here for what they want. This is Texas Metal. Every build we ever done is important to me. But some builds, they just take me back. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. This thing's cool. It's definitely unique. 1965 Ford Falcon. My dad used to have one similar to that, man. I learned how to drive down this road. And I was sitting up in his lap, and I remember steering this thing and not going anywhere. Yeah, right. That's about what it is now. The Falcon was Ford's answer to the VW bus in the 1960s. Unlike the VW, the engine isn't in the back. It's right in between the driver and the passenger seat. I brought it here to let you work your magic. Ooh. I got two little ones and try to take like three weeks vacation on the road a year driving around, get out and see the country. That's really cool. So you need something comfortable, reliable, and safe. And cool. And cool. Getting my daughter and son excited about custom cars and maybe have them riding around in something custom someday. It's a cool thought. Let's check this thing out. All right. Man, this thing's really nice in here, but just not for put your family in and go across country on. My wife will not drive cross country in this car with me. <laughs> what kind of engines in this Where'd thing? did you see this? <laughs> <laughs> it's original. Top speed, 55. <laughs> That's definitely not going to cut it. <laughs> we might as well give it some power for dad on the weekends. That'd be nice. Yeah. That'd be nice. An engine change out is an absolute necessity. It has to be something that, you know, I can actually start over, put new gauges in it, AC. Be nice to have a AC. As far as the running gear, we just need to get rid of everything that's underneath this thing and just start over. New engine, trans, independent front suspension, rack and pinion. Make this thing drive right, because I know it's, it's all over the road right now. Let's check out the rest of this thing. You got plenty of room in it. A lot of studio space in there. Yeah. You're wanting something nice, comfortable for the family, for the kids in the back. You want like TVs, iPads, anything like that? No TVs. Stereo, music would be cool. We got to think about it being unplugged back here. Use the windows as the screens. You know, I get where Scott's coming from. Totally unplugging, getting out, seeing the road, and letting the family enjoy what's out there. I wish my kids could do that. Let's go make it happen. Great. There's nothing worse than rolling up to the rest stop and seeing the exact same vehicle with a different family in it. But Scott's got it figured out. A van for the family and a cool custom van for old dad. Why get something that everybody else has? Customizing a car, customizing a van, there's a lot of room for improvement. There's endless possibilities for something truly custom. <laughs> Come on in, buddy. What is this? Thing's cool, huh? This thing's real cool. Scott is gonna use this thing to take his family all around the country. Man, you really don't see families doing that no more, just getting together and hanging out and driving. That's... Man, you don't. So we're gonna make something really cool, comfortable, and dependable. Something they can take from state to state to state. This thing's got some miles on it. No motor. It's definitely seen better days. We gotta change the power plant. I'm thinking it's a Ford truck, so we gotta stick with the Ford engine. Let's go with the Eco Boost. And plenty of power, super sporty. He'll love to drive this. And check this out, man. See, look at this. <laughs> yeah, it needs some suspension work, huh? It needs a little bit of suspension work. 
We're gonna go through this whole thing front to back, bumper to bumper. Start off with the suspension, put a nice rack and pinion on this thing, and something that's really stable and tight and fun to drive. Going from that, reconfigure the dash. She wants AC in it, of course. With all this glass in it, right. it's gonna get super hot. You know, in this interior, man, it's got a ton of room. This is gonna take some work, really dialing it in. So Heath and John really gotta get creative, use this space. You sure you wanna give Heath and J-Love just free reign to do whatever they want in here? No, there'll be taco sauce all over this thing. Four disco balls and 15 <laughs> speakers right here. This is a cool ride right yeah, here. Yeah, it is, man. Let me check that thing out. Yeah, there's so much room. Before we cut out any of the old suspension, I asked John and Will to take out the interior so we don't have any fires. There we go. All right, you take that. I'll go put these in a bag. You can never have enough bags. It's, a, it's so important to label everything, every little section of the vehicle that you're taking apart. And the reason is, when you go to put it back together, you're always questioning, what did this bolt do? And so the better you label now, the more time you'll save later, and the more professional your job will be. Man, vehicles have came a long way since this was made, huh? Mm -hmm. First thing we're gonna do on this is just rip out all the suspension, motor, trans, rear end, the whole drivetrain. Let's have a bare van body underneath this thing. We're gonna start fresh. Cool. This van's got problems, I got solutions. Shock's cut off. Go ahead, raise it up, and this thing should just fall right out. I'm gonna do the exact same thing to the front. Since we're gonna be pulling the transmission and the engine together, I'm gonna go ahead and pop our transmission linkage, shifter linkage, all that stuff. Take a couple bolts out on the bottom. Things should come out pretty easy. Now I got the big factors out of the way, I can come through here and just tear this thing down completely. Looks good. We're ready to get going on the suspension on this uh -huh. thing. We want this to sit really low, set this thing on the ground with the 23, 24 inch size tires. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna have to do the notch in the unibody here and build notch plates on this structure. We build the notch, we'll get the rear end back in this thing and we'll start building the two link suspension on this. Cool. Mega hole. And this old van is a unibody construction. What that means, there's no full frame underneath this. The frame is actually built into the body, which gets us in the way. So we're gonna start by cutting all this out, get our cross member in, and then we'll go back to connecting it all back together as one. So you see the line, how everything lines up with the top of the frame rail. This is exactly how we want it. Perfect line, straight across. It's gonna be level with the top of the frame and the bottom of the frame. Once I get this tacked in, I can cut the bottoms of that off to where they're even with the frame. Now that I got the ends cut off, I'm gonna go ahead and make all the pieces to box this in. It's all gonna be out of flat bar, same size, same thickness. So I'm gonna make everything all at one time. I'm just boxing in the C-notch right now. Just all those pieces I cut out on the iron worker, tacking them in, making sure everything's square and true. And this is gonna give us all of our structure back when we cut this center part out. Get this all tacked in, weld it up, then I'll be ready to cut out the center. We're far off now, Ryan. Huh? <laughs> You never heard of Romeo and Juliet, huh? That was before my time. <laughs> you know, this old Ford Falcon van came with this started to an independent front suspension. Ryan finished the notch on the rear end. Now he's making space for the new front suspension and the cross member. All right, so everything's cut out and the cross member is mocked up in there but you can see the direction that we're gonna take this. So I'm gonna piece everything back to this center section. 
Basically, just start off with these pieces, make them connect, get the side pieces in there, tack everything together, weld everything out, and then we can move on to building our steering control arms and everything else. You know, when a vehicle rolls up this nice, especially this body, it frees up creativity to focus on the details. Things you might not even realize, we customize. So when we're done, you wouldn't even imagine it any other way. What's happening? Hello, how you doing? Juan. Hey man, good. Juan, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You got the little Cobra, huh? Yes, sir. But this thing looks fun, a little replica? It is a little replica. You know, these cars are super cool. Original Cobras, seven figures. Even the replicas are six figures. Real or fake, it's still a pretty cool car. What do you, man, a little Chevy big block, huh? Ah, uh, yes, sir. I definitely wasn't expecting that. A lot of people usually don't expect that when they see it. It's a 454, plus it has a 400 turbo transmission. Well, I already know this thing has plenty of power. That's one of the reasons why I'm here. I need something for protection, something for safety. It's got that much power? Uh, it feels that way to me. I can definitely see a roll bar back here. You know, that's one thing it's definitely lacking you know, for looks and for safety. I like it. I think to really get the feel of it, to really see what you need, I might need to drive this myself and kind of see how it feels, you know what I mean? Hop on it. Yeah? Yeah. You know, when you're building safety equipment, you really got to see, you know, what the car's made of. Oh, oh. See what the car feels like. Pretty sure that when I came in, Bill already knew what I was really looking for. But any excuse to get it out in the open road, hey, it's fine by me. This thing rides good, handles good, looks good. But I definitely see what you mean. You know, at times it feels kind of squirrely and unsafe for sure. It's because it has so much power. Yeah, I appreciate you letting me drive this thing, really getting a feel for it. It actually does. That's the only way, true way to get an understanding and seeing the need for it. For sure. So, uh, maybe, yeah, it does need it. That was something, wasn't it? <laughs> this thing's fun to drive, for sure. We'll take care of it for you, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. Let's go do some paperwork. Thanks, sir. You know, when you think roll bar, it's just a straight bar with two bends and comes down and protects you. When you're designing a roll bar for such an iconic sports car, that's a totally different subject. The challenge is creating something that not only safety in mind, but something that's totally stylish. And with every angle you look at it, you want the design of the roll bar to flow with the rest of the car. Oh, here it is. It's not bad, not bad. What are we going to do to it? We're going to body drop it. Come on. <laughs> no, man. I mean, you see, this thing's missing something. Miss the roll bar. You know, this has a big block Chevy in it, runs super good. If he's not paying attention, he's going to need some extra protection on this thing, for sure. <laughs> Definitely. That's a good good idea. You've seen the ones with the loop back here and the big bar in mm -hmm. the back. We don't want that. We want something that has clean lines with it. Some of the emulous thing, it just matches perfect. And not only from the rear angle or the front angle from the side too. We want to slope this thing so it all flows together. Once we get it all done, we're going to chrome it too so it matches Ooh. front and rear bumpers. So I understand the idea you want to do. Um, how are we going to anchor this down to the frame? Man, we're just going to put some plates here and bolt it to the fiberglass. So it looks cool. <laughs> I know better than that. No. You know, I haven't taken all this apart to really see how to tie it in yet. You know, that's what we need to do next. Strip it out, strip the trunk lining out, and really see how far down we got to go you know, for a solid foundation. Okay. The thing we gotta do is get to it. Yeah, let's do it. It's kind of crazy. That's what holds the seatbelt on. All right, last piece. All I got left to do is just pull this carpet, this padding behind it. Then we'll kind of be ready to start figure out how we're gonna put the roll bar in here safe, and then we'll worry about how we're gonna style it. I oh, got it, huh? Yeah. How you do that? Man, they're just. Nothing to tie anything to. No. Not only are we going to have to create the roll bar itself, we got to create the structure underneath to, to hold all this together. So it's going to be a little more complicated than I thought. 
You can't mount anything to just fiberglass. You gotta have to go into the frame to really make everything super strong and super safe. All right, man, it's in there. Then we got our foundation. This is gonna be, you know, like the cherry on top of this whole car. Let's get this cut. This will make it or break it. I didn't want to put a gold bar way back here in the back. My opinion looks a total afterthought. That looks better already. Right? I wanted to put it right beside the seats and make something real clean and flowing. So we had to cut the corner of the body out. It's a real subtle difference. I mean, that's what you want. When this thing is done and finished and painted, you will never know it was ever messed with because the lines are still going to flow and look like it was originally made like that. We're gonna roll this pipe so everything has the same flow. So the same arc for the roll bar as it does for the windshield. So we want something that all plays together. Cool. See, we got our line and our square little box here. So we have 48 inches from here to here, and that's the widest point of the car. So we have to bend this so it fits in this box. Then we know when we take it over to that car, it's gonna fit. This might be a replica of a 1966 Cobra, but it's got a real deal 454 Chevy big block. So the roll bar we're making, it has to protect the passengers above all, while also looking like the Cobra should have from the factory. It's got a pretty damn good flow. Maybe a quarter inch now. You, know, you can measure all day long, but especially something like this, it's pretty damn close. Everybody's gonna be looking at it. They're not gonna be measuring it. <laughs> Did you ever get in trouble for standing on the couch? <laughs> you really wanna check every angle. Sit in it real quick, Jim. You wanna really get back and, and get a feel for the overall car itself in relation to what you're building to it. That looks real good. I like it, it looks nice. Let's tack this sucker on. The next step of this thing to making it one whole unit is connecting the outer plate to the inner plate and making that plate go all the way down to the frame. We have our plates on the frame, so the next thing is making the pipe from plate to plate. So we're gonna put the wheel on, drop it down, let's see where this thing rides at and how much room we have in between the wheel and the bracket. We definitely don't want the tire to rub. That would definitely cause a blowout and we don't want to The factory engine on a 1965 Ford Falcon only had 85 horsepower. On the plus side, it was fairly compact. So we picked a small engine, but it has a lot more horsepower. Woo! That thing's cool, a little four cylinder, huh? Four cylinder, 2.3 liter, twin scroll turbo, 300 plus horsepower. Man, that is bad. They're putting these things in the Mustangs, Ford F-150s, guys at the track are killing it with them. This is the perfect combination for this little project. It is. All right, watch your ankles. This thing's light enough where we can just manhandle it up in there from the bottom. Scoot it this way a little bit. Which way? Forward. I think you might have to get the lube out, buddy. <laughs> it's closer, <laughs> right? Yeah. How's it looking back there? That's all uh, I got. I'm touching the floor back here. OK, forward. There you go, right there. Good. Fits in there good. Got to make the doghouse a little wider. I don't know if we need to make it taller or anything. Let's get the rack on this thing, make sure all this is gonna work. Yeah. And then the, the fun part, the steering. Yeah. That's looking real good. Got the radiator in, rack mounted. Looking all right. You see what I'm looking at though? Yeah, right? you know the next thing yeah. that's coming. The fun Been part. dreading it. <laughs> Usually when you're sitting in the car, you got the column out here. The wheels are way out here. It's yeah. super easy to connect the rack to the steering. Yeah. But on this, we're going to have to connect the column all the way back here yeah. to the rack. It might not seem that hard, but out of all the ones that I've done over the years, I've never had to deal with this. So. Yeah. Anytime you see it when it's done, you go, oh, that's easy. Yeah, exactly. But it's figuring it out and getting it to that point. Exactly. Always like a challenge. Yeah, of course. Well, let's drop it down. All right. right now is just putting the column in its place. 
Everything needs to be mocked up. You know where everything's at before you can start anything. This is just where the factory alignment was. We put it back in the original spot. So next thing is to lift this thing up and start making the snake. You see how much room we have here is not very much at all. So we yeah. got the column as far into the van as possible, but it's still a little too long. Let's cut. This little knuckle here, but we can start with this once it's at the bottom of the column. All right, man, spin this sucker. Ain't gonna work. I've never used a double knuckle like that before, and man, it's just lining up. I haven't either. The main thing you look for when you're figuring out a steering shaft is make sure all the U joints aren't in a bind. You want it to be smooth, free, and clear. And double knuckle is too many moving parts all at once. There's no stabilization in something like that. So it's just going to flop all around. So it's one frustration after another, <laughs> right? Yeah, man, you said it. Because we changed the 1965 Ford Falcon van to independent front suspension, we knew getting the steering configuration was going to be a lot of trial and error. What's up, fellas? Look what I got here. buddy. Oh, fresh out the box. That's what we need. A 90 degree small gearbox. Hopefully, when we turn left, it goes left. When we turn right, it goes right. If your calculations are correct. We'll see. Huh? See ya. It's going to make life a lot easier. Let's pull the column back. Let's get this in place and slip the column back in. So everything's super tight. It's as high as I can go up without taking everything apart. Up towards the bump. Not quite that far. All right, that's it. Hold it right there just a second. Cool, let's make the bracket for this and just continue the snake. I'm making a bracket for this steering box to hold it exactly where we want. Just take a couple pieces of cardboard, make your template, get exactly how you want it, and then boom, go over there and make it in no time. Yeah. Turn to the right. That's exactly what we needed. Problem solved, man. I love hearing those words. Man, it works good. Awesome. You know, I was super nervous about how we're going to get this to here. Never done that before. It looks simple now, you know, once it's done, but ingenuity behind it, there's no a little bit of figuring. Button it up, let's get it to the body shop. Cool. The roll bar is getting chromed on the 1966. There's just a hole drilled in the fiberglass for a seat belt. I mean, that. I, I don't get it. I, I can't believe somebody thought that's a good idea and that would be safe. We have to address this. We're going to come up with a way to make a little bracket to tie it into the frame. That way, this thing is safe and secure, and it's a total, complete, safe package. I'd be really comfortable putting a seat belt on that now. It's not just the seat belts. The seats are also bolted to the fiberglass. So we're going to fix that, too, with some new brackets. All right, everything looks good. It's all welded in. Should be nice and safe now. We're going to push this thing in for a quick body and paint. And then we're going to install the freshly chrome roll bar. I'll hand it to you over the car. Don't scratch nothing. 
Why'd you have to make it so perfect, Jamie? We got this build as cool as we could make it. It not only looks better, but what's really important, this thing is a lot safer than when it pulled up. That's how I'd want it for my family. What's up, man? Good morning, Mr. Bill. How you doing? Good morning, man. Real good. You ready? I'm ready as I'm going to be. I know when you came in, you know, you've had a couple issues with that car. The car looked cool, but there was nothing to keep you safe in that thing. We got you definitely, definitely hooked up on this. And that's the reason why I came here. You ready to check it out? I'm ready. Jamie, let's get it. Ooh, look at that. Oh, man, that's exactly what I was looking for. Classy, elegant, and unique. Seeing the car for the first time, it was like, wow, it's Christmas for me again. Woo-wee. Thank you so much. You're welcome, you're welcome. So you're liking it? I'm liking it. Safety was your major concern on this. We addressed that for sure. Built something not only safe for you, but stylish. Just rolled some pipe, made it the same contour as the windshield, and also the same angle as the windshield. We actually notched out the corners of the body itself to give the roll bar a little more room in between the seat and the body. So everything just flows together. I hadn't even noticed until you mentioned it. I mean, it looks like it was that way already. Right. You know, it's tough to come up with something new on such an iconic car. But as you can see, all the lines are right, the angles are right. This is exactly the frame. You know, while we're underneath the car, we definitely noticed a lot of safety issues underneath this thing. Blew my mind when I seen this. The seat belts were just drilled through the fiberglass body, just holding in with an anchor and a washer, and that was it. Man, oh, man. Man, we couldn't let you roll out like that. Mm -hmm. You know, all this hard work would have been for nothing if you would have just been ejected out of the car if something would have happened. <laughs> You're right about that. I mean, it would have been with this kind of heat, be like scrambled eggs on the sidewalk. <laughs> so we went ahead and reinforced it with metal, made everything strong inside of the frame. Now it's really safe. That's why I knew that I had to come here. If you would have seen something that was not going to be done right, you're going to handle it and do it right. Safety was my big concern. Now I could definitely say I feel safe now. You know, you wouldn't think just a roll bar to give you a different attitude about something. In this case, it definitely does. You feel safer, more confident, and it looks good. I just want to say thank you to Bill and all his men here at Extensive. They did a phenomenal job. They went ahead and they put a bolt right here, so that way the belt is actually on the frame. Nice. Every time I got in the car, I used to be nervous. You don't want to sit on the other side with me? <laughs> now I really feel safe. And I really appreciate that. And I'm sure my wife appreciates that, too. We gave the Falcon van a custom air ride, a new steering configuration, and an engine swap. Now the body guys are going to prep the cab for paint. What I don't want it to look like is some 70s piece van, you know, with fluorescent colors or something like that. I did kind of like that. I wanted my first truck kind of that color. It's just fitting to have, you know, the kids have their say so in the color of the whole truck. I picked a couple of colors because I don't want this van looking cheesy. You don't want a, a loud, fluorescent, off the wall color that next year is going to get old on you. This is a family heirloom. It's going to be passed down to them. So if they pick the wrong color, they're stuck with it no matter what. They picked it. You know, a huge part of the custom world is dads handing down their passion for cars to their kids. That's how we keep this whole thing going. So we just love how Scott's getting his kids involved, picking the color for this old Ford Falcon van. What's happening? Hi, Bill. Nice to see you. I got Heath here. Hi, guys. Hi, Heath. Hello. You guys ready to pick some color? <laughs> ready? This is a uh, the brown. No, I don't like the brown. Okay, okay. There's a green. The green looks cool. I like the green. Let's see what's next. Got like a tan, like a goldish tan. Oh, man. All right, there we go, uh, all three of them at once. So vote for your favorite, Mark. I like greens. Green's your favorite, Cole. What's your favorite? My favorite is tan. Your favorite is tan. <laughs> all right, Scott, you're the tiebreaker. Maybe we can do green or <laughs> So I think it's going to be green. Green it is. You got it. It's a great choice. All right, guys. Appreciate your time. Thank Bye. you, guys. Hey, it was nice to meet y'all. Nice to meet you.
Bye. Green it is. You know, all honesty, that was the color I was hoping they picked. This green's really gonna make the whole thing stand out. With so much space in this van, the sky's the limit. And that's what I asked John to do. This thing is it's as big as the sky, so we're gonna do a starlight headliner on it. I'm gonna start by putting up my foam board. When I go to put in the fiber optic lights, I'm actually gonna be using a needle to poke holes in this. So I need something that's thin enough and easy enough to get through, but yet still strong enough to help hold the form and shape. Hey, look at that. We got the headliner all built, wrapped, and ready to go. The next thing we gotta do is we gotta install the fiber optic lighting. To do that, I'm gonna have to take these fiber optic strands here and I have to poke individual holes for every one of them. We've got 780 of them here. I better get started. I wanna try to get this thing done before the real stars come out. There's really no easy way to go about this. It's just gonna be time consuming and just gotta sit here and do it. You know, it's just gonna matter of poking all these holes and running everything through. But the final product will be so worth it. I think it's really gonna have that wow factor. Rather than using the old windows on that fresh paint, Chad's gonna make some new ones by hand. Okay, what we're doing here is they don't produce a lot of these windows, and it's hard to find one that's in a good shape with no scratches, so we have to make our own. This glass here is actually laminate glass. It's two pieces of glass with a piece of lamination in the center. It actually keeps you safer because it cracks and it doesn't shatter. And what I'm doing now is I'm scoring the glass to get through the first layer. Well, the glass is really a delicate material, so what I have to do is I have to get in here and I have to break it through. Now what we're doing is we're taking some denatured alcohol and we're softening up the lamination in the center. And there we go. It's time to put it in and see what it looks like. Well, what I'm doing is I'm sitting it inside the lip here, and then I gotta tuck the rope on the inside so I can tuck the lip around the pin plug. And we're locking the gasket in. And what I'm looking for is making sure there's no imperfections and the gasket is tucked nice against the vehicle. It's looking good, so it's time to move on to the next one. After four long days of dealing with this and poking all these holes, finally have them all in. As you can see, there's a ton of fiber optics here. What this is, is basically, it's got a big LED in here that is cast down through the fiber optics. And anywhere that you cut it off at, as you can see, the ends of it will light up. I've only got to do this 780 times. All right, let's see what this thing looks like. It's looking stellar, you could say. Kids should love it. That's so cool. Yeah, man, it's gonna be like camping out at night. Yeah, just riding along, looking at the stars. All we got left to do now is get this thing installed in the van and get all the trim work in around it. You know, it's pretty cool. I think back of all the days growing up with my dad, working with my dad, he loved welding and fabricating, you know, and taught me that skill set. And I applied that to the car to the aspect. Cars, totally Just opposite. Totally opposite <laughs> for you. Your dad was everything into it, but not a welder fabricator, nothing like that. Me and him are a lot alike. My dad's all <laughs> in the cars. I would have rather been in the shop with my dad getting dirty rather than sitting at home on the couch. You know, they inspired us. Maybe we can have the same kind of impression and footprint on, on our children. Mm -hmm. Dude, my kid is four next month, and he's really taking a liking to all this stuff. It'll be really cool, you know, to see him kind of follow my footsteps. That's it. Keep it going. Keep man. it going, man. The most important part is showing your kids your passion for something. Yeah, just give them a little want to, you know what I mean? You got to have that want to. If you don't care to do anything, you're never going to be good at anything. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the Starry Night headliner is definitely one of a kind touch, and it just adds to all the customization that we've already done to that 65 Ford Falcon van. 
That's a pretty crooked board. When I finished up the Starlight headliner in the van, I thought I was done poking holes, but as I sat there, I thought about a way we can incorporate the Starlights into the seats as well. I think I'm uh, hating myself already for coming up with another one of these ideas and these fiber optics, but it'll be worth it in the end. Got this Peruvian walnut all carved out and ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a hand router and create the pocket inside of it. You know, with this thing being handmade, it really looks like it belongs in a 1965 Ford Falcon van. You know, back then, production line and assembly lines, they pushed through, but there were still a lot of the cars that were handmade. Now I have to drill 200 holes to run my fiber optics through. I was talking about how I thought I'd learned my lesson on the first go around with these things, but no. Just gonna trim these back. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a really cool effect having them in the seats. Kind of seamless all the way from the ceiling into the seats. That's something I've never seen. Just pour the epoxy. I want it to match the seats. So I got some dye mixed up to match the leather in the van. I'm gonna take my epoxy and get it mixed up. We'll get the color in it and we'll pour this in there and let it dry. The trick here is to make sure to not overfill it. So just kind of evenly distributing it. Definitely don't want it running out all over the place, so. All right, now that I got the seats all covered and everything, the next thing I gotta do is just get the nerve up and cut this thing open. Oh, it's a sickening feeling. It'll so be worth it. Just gotta remember that, it'll be worth it. So once I get this all glued in here, then we'll get the emblem in it. Man, this looks good, dude. Yeah, man, I think it turned out real nice. Hey, Siri, turn off the lights. Man, they're gonna love it, dude. Well worth it, you know? Beautiful. I can't wait to get it to the kids and let them see this thing. Scott and his family have been waiting a long time for this van, and I know they're ready to get it back. Scott's a really busy guy running his construction company up in Chicago, so we're going to ship this van straight up to him. Since this is a family van, I thought I'd ask my kids just to get their take on it, see if it's cool. You guys ready to go home? Yeah. Before we go, I want you to check out something. We just built a van for a customer in Chicago. We got to ship this thing back. But before we do, I want your guys' opinion on this. See how good we did. OK, let's go check it out. You want to see it? Yeah, let's go, let's go it. do it. Come on. Come on. So I want your guys' honest opinion, OK? OK. Not just because I'm your dad. I want you to really tell me what you think, OK? okay. Yes, sir. We've seen a lot of like what our dad does around here. He just never really asks for our opinions. This must be like a pretty special one. John's bringing this thing out right now. It's gonna be here any second. You know the moment of truth. I hope they like this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's so cool. Oh, that's oh, cool. That's so cool. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Like it? Yeah. Cool. That's really cool. The green makes it so good. You know, when this van came in, it was in decent shape, but it wasn't in this good of shape. We had to rip out all the old suspension, and we put brand new air suspension on this thing. With rack and pinion steering, it drives like a modern car should. The way it sits, like, really, really, really low to the ground, so cool. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It gives a little new little attitude. You know, we spent a lot of time on the suspension and steering on this van, but, you know, the kids would never know that. That's all. And the old engine just wasn't cutting it either, so we got a brand new four-cylinder turbocharged in this thing. That's cool. That's why you hear that nice little blow-off valve when it comes up and goes Psh! It's got plenty, plenty power. Ooh. Of course, we had to have upgraded brakes, big wheels, freshened up all the paint, and all, all new chrome. And Dad, I really, really like the color. I think it, it makes the van it's pretty cool. unique. His kids picked that color out. They got good taste. Yeah. You know, I spent a lot of time on this interior, thinking about my kids, his kids. Me, personally, I love it, but I can't wait to see what you guys think about it. You want to check it out? Yeah. Check this out. Oh. <laughs> that is very I good. like the lights. The stars make that so, so, so nice. John's got a lot of time in this thing. I spent at least a week poking holes and running lights. By the end of it, I was done with it. Right. It looks worth it. It was well worth yeah. it. I'm very happy with it. That being in this van made it 10 times cooler. Uh, stuff we don't see every day in a van. Will you guys get in there and check it out. Yeah. Heck yeah.
are really comfortable. Right? Very yeah. Cool. I love how many windows there are. The lights look better up close, too. You know, you guys are so busy looking up there, you didn't even notice there's no TVs and no screens anywhere in here, right? The whole focused on family and the trip and spending time together Can and not window? on your phones or, you know, watching a video. I think these guys' kids are definitely going to enjoy have lots of fun adventures and trips in this van. I'm already jealous that they get to take a ride in that. This is my favorite car that you have built. Really? Yeah. Cool. I guess we did yeah. pretty good, John. That's why cool. you got to make us one, too. John <laughs> did most of the work. <laughs> I got my kids' seal of approval, so I know Scott's kids are definitely going to love this van. You know, look in the overall van, the color, the wheels, the stance, the engine, the interior. Man, I love this little van. And Scott, I can't wait for you to take your family on the road and really hear about those trips you're going to take together. If you're ever road tripping through Houston, stop on by.